Hi Internet, it's Peter from Russian Machine Never Breaks, and since our last video, I've learned two things. Thing number one, I need to talk just a little bit slower, and thing number two... Uh, thing number two is you guys want more bulldogs in your videos. Say hi, Georgia. Okay, good job. So listen, my number one job at Russian Machine Never Breaks is to write recaps of games, and I've done hundreds of them. It was really, really easy in like 2009, 2010, and even the first part of 2011 because the Capitals were scoring tons of goals and it was lots of fun. And all I had to do was make up funny ways to describe how they scored goals and spell words wrong and people thought that was a riot. In 2011, the Capitals struggled a bit. They were scoring fewer goals. They were winning fewer games. Everyone was kind of grumpy and it sucked. At that point, I had to sort of shift things up with the recaps because it's just really hard to make jokes when your team's getting blown out 5-0 like five times a season. I sort of noticed a pattern. People are a lot more enthusiastic about the team when the team is winning. There's this myth that sports media and sports media on a single beat thrive on negativity on a team losing on a team struggling because they're negative they're like reverse vampire they're just yeah. that's not really true though i bet jp from japers rink and your boy dan steinberg from the amazon post dc sports blog would back me up on that georgia you're breathing way too loud i got kind of curious as to what patterns make people happy and enthusiastic about reading and watching hockey and what makes people grumpy sour posters that don't like to go to visit my website I took all the regular season games from this year, counted up the page views, and then compared them to each other, thinking that that would be some kind of proxy about how into hockey people are at a given moment. But the first thing that we should establish is that interest in hockey is a cyclical thing. Each year we see a slope from people not really caring so much at the beginning of the season to being freaking crazy by the end of the season. And although our traffic grows every year, it grows much faster, nearer, and during the playoffs than it does otherwise. For example, you can see the traffic in the month of January right after the lockout was way lower than it was in April right before the playoffs. There's lots of reasons for this and we'll get to that in a second. The most obvious thing is that people like to watch wins more than they like to watch losses and I assume they like to read about them as well. That makes sense as win recaps are filled with jokes and enthusiasm whereas loss recaps are like grumpy little jerks that you don't want to be around. Seriously, I'm not insulted if you don't want to read the losers. Here's a weird one. Shootout recaps are weirdly unpopular. I don't know why that is. Maybe that's because the games are so long that people don't care about them anymore. Maybe it's because people don't like the gimmick. Maybe it's just a small sample size. When we talk about Capitals hockey as some kind of mythological thing, we're talking about score more goals hockey, fire wagon hockey, end to end hockey, Boudreaux hockey, and we see that readers really do like that. Readers are not really enthusiastic about games that feel like the dead puck era with zero or one or two goals being scored. They really react strongly when five plus goals are being scored wings. And that goes both ways as well, which is kind of a surprise to me. Readers don't respond strongly to shutouts. They respond strongly to a giant scoring game on both ends of the ice. This next one I found a little bit odd. Recaps of row games are much more popular than home games. Maybe that's because the 17,000 people that just watched the game at Verizon Center aren't super amped to read about it immediately afterwards. I don't know. Weekend games are generally more popular than weekday games, especially Saturday. I guess it's because no one has plans for the next day. But let's come back to that first chart again. We saw that traffic was really low at the beginning of the season, got really high at the end of the season. I think there's probably a lot of reasons why that could be. It could be because people care more about the team the nearer we are to the playoffs. It could be because other sports are stopping around that same time. It could be because Russian Machine's audience is naturally growing as time goes on. But I think the biggest explainer is that the caps were kind of sucky at the beginning of the season and kind of awesome at the end. That brings me back to my central point. People like to read about a winning team. Winning makes people enthusiastic. It makes me enthusiastic. I like to make jokes. I don't like to complain about Alex Ovechkin's Corsi score or Joel Ward giving up a high sticking penalty in the final two minutes of a game. That's not why I got into this not-for-profit business. Like the rest of you, I want to see the Capitals winning 60% of their games. I want to see the Capitals in Pittsburgh winning in overtime 6-5 to five on a Saturday in March. Not just because that's good for my site's traffic, but because that's what I like as a fan. While we don't have any Saturday games against the Penguins scheduled for this upcoming season, I have a feeling that there's some good hockey ahead of us either way. In other news, that Paul Reed Smith guitar that was autographed by all of the Capitals players, including Cam Schilling, who has played 12 minutes in the NHL, sold at auction for more than $1,500. That money goes directly to the Andrea Henderson Memorial Fund, which helps out breast cancer patients. That's terrific. If you have any more ideas for charity and other ways that Rush Machine can help out the community, please let us know. That's kind of what we're here for in the first place. Thanks for watching.